do today i'm gonna do um houston beauty i'm sorry i got sidetracked houston beauty um episode three so it starts off miss j she's talking about how all the students are getting along and she's happy that everybody's getting along everybody's smiling doing hair whatever whatever so then she makes this announcement that um it's a high profile client coming in and that they're going to do 15 different hairstyles and they're going to choose um who would work with these students so everybody's excited they're thinking that it could be tina knows or it could be gladys knight and i'm sitting there like tina knows is not coming to franklin beauty school now i don't know where franklin beauty school is actually located in houston but that shit do not look like that's going to be in the better part of houston it doesn't look like it's in the woodlands it don't look like it's by the galleria it don't look like it's downtown it don't even look like it's where the homeless people be downtown i'm just saying and i have lived in houston like for two years and it doesn't this shit look like it's on the north side it look like mm, you don't even see no sidewalk so you know it's not in the more city part of houston i'm just saying so um i don't i can't i just can't see tina knows going there tina knows is a celebrity stylist why the fuck would she be there i'm just saying um so then everybody started talking about the real housewives of atlanta so my good did you see the reunion woo, woo, woo. so then we find out that gray's sister is the makeup artist or something for cynthia and nene and Grace was saying how she used to work for her sister and stuff like that. But I guess her sister didn't need her no more. <laughs> I don't know. But she said she quit or whatever. And her family, her and her family don't get along because she didn't choose to go with the family business and all this kind of stuff. So, hey. Apparently, Grace's sister is like the bougie sister. So, the family took her side. Now, don't act like we don't have them. Everybody have that one sister that the family think is better than the other now when it like like for me for instance a lot of people in my family think i'm the more bougier twin than my sister and i'd be like no it's not like that we both from the hood we both talk shit we both you know what i'm saying so i get where you know people do the comparison with the family members and yeah so then we have me and ryan i guess it's lunchtime me and ryan brings um some shrimp i guess some boiling crab some shrimp some potatoes or whatever and she brings it in this butter bowl so queensley start trying to you know talk about her about the butter bowls and i'm like bitch don't act like everybody ain't got no butter bowl in their house if you black you got a butter bowl and a jelly jar i'm just saying and you drink out of that shit some kool-aid some soda water whatever we all have them or have had them and if you haven't i don't understand how you're watching um I don't understand how you're watching Houston Beauty if you never, uh, I, 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 if you can't relate. If you can't relate to a butter bowl or a juice jar or some raggedy ass weave that we keep seeing on this show, this show ain't for you. I don't understand how you're watching reality TV. Queensley, I don't understand how you even go to this school, but we, <laughs> we don't. Queensley is hood. I don't know why Quincy be acting like she ain't got no hood part in her. Quincy hood is shit because we could tell from her mama. Um, so then here come Grace. Grace comes in looking like Debbie Downer. She wants some attention because when people, um, not people, Mia asked her what was wrong. She was like, nothing, nothing, nothing. That's people trying to get a fucking attention. I hate when people try to come to you 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 want to you, you want to stay with somebody else and they come over there and try to put the attention on them because they want you to ask them the questions they want to talk about it it's just just say hey i need to talk i need to vent but the, i guess these girls ain't that close so hey but bitch if you ain't that close you wouldn't be eating my food i'm just saying so they are um she was telling them how her family don't know that she goes to franklin and how she's a single mom and all this kind of stuff and the, her parents bought her i mean her sister bought her parents this 2013 car and she's scraping from pennies and nickels or whatever for gas money you know just giving her a little sad little situation so mia um and quincy was like we all gonna be here for each other and i thought that was cool because you always when you're in school and or you haven't been in school for a long time or you know you just took a break from school you need that at least one person 
to be there with you, to help push you through school, for you to push them through school. You always need that. So I understood that part because even when I was in medical assistant school, I had this one girl that, like, I'm telling you, the first day she was giving me side eye, just like these girls was. She was giving me side eye. Hey, I think everybody was kind of checking everybody else out. I didn't care. I don't check people out when I go to school. I can care less of what you got on, how you act, but if you ain't coming at me wrong, I ain't coming at you wrong. But me and her have became the best of friends. Can't nobody tell me nothing wrong about her. I will never talk bad about her. She won't ever talk bad about me. I love this girl. I love her kids. We just became real, real cool. And we've been friends for a good... My daughter is eight now. And so we've been really, real good friends for a good eight, nine years. And I love her to death. So I can understand where you get that one friend from school and... Y'all can be thick as thieves. And I really think that can be the relationship between at least Mia and Queensley. So, anyways, moving on from that. The students, they working on their hairstyles or whatever. Everybody talking about Queensley, um, can't do hair, and all this kind of stuff. Now, my thing was, how is some of these girls um, doing these clients when I thought they were supposed to have 150 hours to even work on people customers or whatever so that that was like a real shock to me like why is queensley and grace even in here now mia i can understand because they said she only got like a month left of school but i didn't understand why queensley and grace was there when they're freshmen so anyway they the little clients come in they come to be some little girls that will that's going to be doing a houston little pageant or whatever for little girls they have this one little black little girl that needs to get popped in the mouth now, I understand she said, can I make comments? But this little girl was too damn grown for her own damn good. She going through the line, through the line, through the line. And just talking about each person's hairstyles. Now, Neil, your shit was looking kind of weird. But Neil hairstyle was more for, like, grown people, couture, that kind of hairstyle. And I think he just... And, and that was basically it. These people, these students thought they were styling an adult. So, when they got these little kids coming in, they weren't expecting that. So, anyway, Grace, Monica, Mia, Queensley, and Neil end up winning. So, Queen asked Corey, his name should have been Queensley, because that motherfucker is a queen out of this world. He, um, go bitch to Miss J, because he's teacher's pet. And he don't understand why he didn't win, and she don't understand why he didn't win either. So, she's going to put him... As an assistant. And I'm sitting there like, no. And then he was like, yeah, I'm going to assist. I'm going to assist my way. And I'm going to backstab. And I'm going to get to their clients. And I was sitting there like, you's a bitch. Straight bitch. I don't like Corey. He needs to man the fuck up. I don't care. Now, I don't know if Corey is gay or not. But he give me gay tees. And I don't have a problem with gays. But man the fuck up. I don't mind dudes being gay. Don't. So, don't. I don't want people to think that I... You know, I have a problem with gay dudes. My problem is, when you act more of a bitch than the female, you need to get hit in the throat. I'm just saying. If you not transitioning to me or Ryan, you need to get hit in the fucking throat. Because you're trying to act like, dress like you hard, but acting like a bitch. I don't get it. Just saying. Um, so, then you have the students, um... They know you have Mia and Ryan, Mia and Ryan, sorry, at and what's her name, Queensley at Mia's house, and they're talking about the pageant and stuff like that. Then they were talking about Miss J because how Miss J is always coming for Queensley, always, and she do. So then after that, I think the next day the students arrive and some of them are out of uniform. Queensley arrives late, so Miss J start complaining. Miss J was more complaining about Queensley than anybody else in that school. And Queensley felt attacked. Because she told, she was like, Queensley, come here. So Queensley come over. She was like, go back to class. Queensley was like, I, I am. They was asking me to do something. And Miss J was like, well, you need to go. She was just being a bitch to Queensley. Just straight attitude. So Queensley storms off and needed to, fret, you know, she told her to go get her, her smock or whatever that shit called, the little jacket. So she went to her car. She was talking shit as she was walking to the car. This bitch ass girl, Jessica, and I use bitch slightly because I want to call you some other shit. But she goes and starts a rumor in the school and say that Quincy said, fuck Miss J. 
No, she didn't. Was there editing that I didn't see? Did some shit get cut out? I don't know. But I never got that from her. It don't even look like she has said that. So, then they go tell the instructor. The instructor go tell Miss J. Miss J go tell her son. Then it's just like a big ass blow up as Queensley and Mia sitting in the car talking. Mia trying to, you know, calm her down and get her to come back to school. And the son comes out there and pops the fuck off. Pops off like a little bitch too. I don't know. They got too many bitch boys running around in school. I'm just saying like get some balls. Get some nuts. Get a back. I don't know. But it's too many bitch boys at this school. This boy would have got punched in the fucking throat. I would have slashed his face. Come into my van talking shit about did you say fuck my mama? You said fuck my mama. Get out the parking lot. Don't come back. Y'all would have had to call the police. First of all, I'm quite sure Queensley got financial aid. Queensley probably has a loan. There's no way in the fucking world that I'm going to be paying you guys anywhere between $10,000 and $15,000 to come to that ghetto-ass school. Then y'all kick me out and not have the facts. Did y'all see the shit on camera? Did y'all hear the shit on camera? And y'all going to kick her out? I thought that was way out of line. I would have had, I'm sorry, I'm, if I was Quincy, I would sue this school because I felt like they dogged her out. Regardless if editing and making Quincy look bad or whatever, they dogging the shit out of Quincy. I hope Miss J feels stupid as shit after she watched this and noticed that Quincy didn't do nothing that they said she did. That Jessica started this shit. Then you had an instructor to go and tell you some shit that she didn't hear. Everybody was telling Miss J some shit that she didn't hear. Miss J didn't hear it and she went and told her son. So that was some more rumor bullshit that y'all dog Quincy out about. I just wasn't here for it. I wasn't here for that. Mia even was mad as shit because she nobody understood how this happened. Miss Burns tried to come out and talk to Queen Lee and was just telling her that sometimes you have to just be quiet. And I was just like, why? Why is everybody trying to make Queensley be fucking quiet when this was not her fault? This shit shouldn't even went this far, first of all. So then, um... They showed Mia and Queensley at her house. They're talking about the situation. Uh, Queensley can't understand nothing. None of this is going on. Mia's trying to get her not to leave. Yada, 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 whatever. So then we have the pageant day. And Corey replaced Queensley because he's a bitch. And he was trying to move in in any goddamn way. So he replaced her. Then you they showed Neil and his client. Um, this little girl was reading off a little... No. Corey, little girl, was reading off a little scrabble piece of paper. She looked like she was scrabbling some shit, but she was like, I want some mace mascara. Like, she learned her lines. I want some mascara. I want this. I'm like, ain't nothing on that damn paper. But whatever. I guess she, whatever she wrote, she she understood. You know how kids scrabble. They, they can tell you exactly what they wrote. That's what happened. Neil, um, little girl, her mama was a bitch. Her mama was a straight-ass bitch. You telling her you want her hair elegant, but your hair is blue as fucking Smurfs. Are you serious? Come on now. Whatever. Me and Ryan, little girl, um, her mom just want her to have big hair. She just wanted her to have big hair. Grace had the little girl. Her name is Hannah. Um, the little smart mouth little girl. Um, she won, so that was cool. Um, Mia was trying to leave out after the pageant, and Miss J tried to stop her and was like, um, I thank you for coming, and I'm and I'm really proud of you. And then she started talking about you, you, you. Um, it was basically like you came to the school to better your life. You can't be worried about nobody else that's here. Basically, like, but you can't be worried about Queensley and her bullshit. You need to focus on you. And I was like, that was fucked up. You don't do. And me and Ryan got that shit because that's why she just kept saying, "Okay, Miss J. Okay, okay." She got exactly what she was trying to say. And who she was referencing that conversation to. So, whatever. I wasn't here for that shit. I'm not here for Miss J at all. And I hope this school... I mean, this show just ruins her school. Because I feel like... I don't like people that get your money. And then just because you go to their school, they feel like they could talk to you any kind of way. They could treat you any kind of way. Hell to the no. Don't work that way. So, anyway. um, The next day, Miss J... She talking to... um. Her little punk ass sons. 
Yeah, it, yeah, she was talking to her little punk ass sons about the situation. Her little punk ass son was telling her other son about the situation. This is more rumors just starting because you now you put it on another son if this girl said fuck Miss J and that's not what happened. And they were talking about they don't really want her back and all this kind of stuff. Miss J really want her back because she was like, well, this school is for people that help people that nobody else would want. So I'm sitting there like, so. If you think Miss Tina knows or Gladys Knight was coming to that shit, if you got all the rejects, uh -uh. don't see it. So anyway, Queenzy talking to her mama. She, you know, her mama wants to know what happened. Queenzy telling her side. Her mama was telling her sometimes you need to keep your mouth closed and tone it down. And I'm sitting there like, I understand Queenzy can be over the top, and Queenzy is Queenzy. She and just like she told her mama, turn down for what? Tone down for what? This is you name me, Queensley. This is what you name me, and I understood that. I don't now, like I said, I could see Queensley being over the top and being devious sometimes, but that's not what we're getting from her. That's not the shit we, we're being shown. So for her mama to go so hard on her, I was just like, you don't. I hate when people don't know all the facts and then just go off about what they know of you so they don't feel like you can change or you can't act different in a different environment i i just can't see it now i might cuss on here i might be popping off i don't act like that when i'm outside i act totally different i'm very there i mean you guys might be shocked but i'm very quiet when i'm around even my friends a lot of my friends be like damn you quiet is everything okay i'm just quiet i'm 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 more observant. I will just sit there and observe shit. Because I'm the type of person, if I want, I want to know if some fake ass people is up in our circle. So I'm the type of person just going to sit there and observe. I'm not going to be out there talking and spreading my business in a circle. And I don't know everybody in that damn circle. Just saying. So, um, I understand where Queensley can be over the top at home and not over the top at school. Or not over the top at work. So, hey. So, mama... Y'all all gonna feel stupid when y'all see when y'all see this shit air. I'm just saying. So anyway, Miss Um J end up calling Queensley and tell her she's suspended. So Queensley's like, you know, why? And she was like, because of the disrespect. And she was like, I don't feel like I disrespected you. So Miss J didn't want to talk to her. Miss J did not want to hear nothing Queensley had to say, and that's why I say Queensley need to sue their ass. You guys are dogging her out. Y'all and then my thing is y'all kick her out. She still have to pay this money. So that's why I feel like Quincy needs to sue their ass. Cause she's still gonna be liable to pay that fucking loan back. And I'm quite sure most of these bitches in that school got a loan. So I felt like that was really fucked up for her to be suspended. Next week they gonna see me or Ryan um at a truck talking to some dude, so they gonna think she all tricking again. And I was just like, hey, y'all go with that assumption shit. Y'all don't know what the fuck she's over there doing. Now, hey, I'm not saying she's not doing it, but my thing is, stop making assumptions. And then she gonna go missing. So hey, hopefully she come back because I love me some Mia Ryan and I love me some Queensley. So anyway, this is my review for Houston Beauty. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Um, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I do everything by the gut of T-H-A, not T-H-E. Also, um, follow me or friend me or whatever the shit is on Google+. Plus. I will add you back because I feel like we can interact on there because I'm still confused on this YouTube bullshit. So, yeah, make sure you check out Ashley Miller, 1987. Might be 801. Check out Bondi um, Blue. She also do Houston Beauty uh, reviews, so check her videos out. All right, peace.